that zoned out, and I hear, um, Dick, I, I need Dick. Mm. <laughs> I, I kind of... Yeah, dude, made I, me fucking laugh. Dude, I, so, I, so I, 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 I just jumped in with that. Dude, I, I, my ears perk up, and I, and I approach her, and I was like, maybe I, I'm exactly what you're looking for. She's like, Dick with sweet cream. I'm like, Jesus, keep it down a little bit. But yeah, like, I don't, do you want to go out back? Like, what do you want? And this gentleman walks up next to me during this, and he goes, I'm Dick, large latte, sweet cream. And she's like, yeah. And he, <laughs> I'm not allowed in that Starbucks anymore. <laughs> As you shouldn't be. Welcome to Hoagie Time. Be, Welcome to Hoagie Time. Where we camera over here, different yeah. angle. Huh? We're going with a different angle, man. We're trying to we're trying to find our comfort zone here at Hoagie Time headquarters, Casa O'Hagan. What's up, man? How was uh, how was your week? A week since we last met. What what is there anything to report? I had no gigs this past weekend. Oh, we got. Thank uh, you for the Ho Gardens, Trish Daly. Trish Daly, thanks for the Ho Gardens. Or whatever your last name is now, but you'll always be yeah, Trish Daly yeah. to me. Thank you for the Ho Gardens. No offense to the new moniker, the yeah. new uh, the new name. Um, I didn't have any gigs this weekend. I didn't do anything no. for the Eagles game. I chilled with we chilled with my kids. Um, Such bit. I don't. Sorry. I don't got a whole a whole no. lot of report, man. Yeah. Did you play this weekend? I did. I was at Westgate Pub. How was that? I enjoyed. You it. You were looking forward to that. I was, and uh, it's a good spot. It, I like it. I um. My first time there, and it was uh, it was cool. Bernie Egan, uh, a hoagie, he he was there. Shout out Bernie Egan. Yeah, uh, he goes back. A, a, he goes way back with us. A lot of my Havertown fans, the Keenan family. Uh, nice. They roll out. Love, love all those guys. Yeah, Bunzy. <laughs> he was Bunzy there. Nah, he's he, Bunzy. He's a family man now. You don't get him out like he used to. Much but, respect to all the other Keenans. When we do get Buns out, it's me and him ripping parliaments <sighs> all night. <sighs> You know what I'm talking about, Buns. Bunzy, when yeah. I get that twinkle in my eye <laughs> with Michael Buckley. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, that's yeah. where I was. And, the, yeah, the Eagles, I I, uh, I ended up going to Tavola uh, for a little, but I watch? stopped. Yeah, I stopped. You weren't uh, performing. I weren't performing. I was not performing, yeah. But how about it? We're back in the Super Bowl. It's cool, man. It's a really cool thing. And you know what? I realized today, in the bar business, it's always historically beat at the end of January into February, and it usually doesn't pick up until uh, St. Patrick's Day or so. Yeah. So a lot of gigs and stuff. If you're a work, you know, bartender, waitress, uh, waiter, musician, those are cold, the dry months. There's a good chance you're going to work and going home in an hour because nobody's out. It's always a great thing when the, the Eagles are in the Super Bowl because that boosts all that. Great thing, dude. And I don't, yeah. I don't talk about my work on the podcast, but yeah. I, wor I work in the beer industry and have mm -hmm. for a while. It's a markedly noticeable thing. Increase, right? It, yeah, and especially like in the playoffs too, like where it's not like uh, all throughout the playoffs, like the fills. Yeah. Like where every night feels like a Super Bowl for like five nights, you know, out of yeah. a week. Like there is a gigantic boost to the uptick. economy. Absolutely. And to take the, out and bars yeah, too. And to the general like vibe of a city. Like, you know, like yeah. it's, it's 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 cool. It's just a cool thing. Have you seen some of the videos <laughs> floating around? Fucking what's what's so cool is like finally like after so many years, and we're we're Delco guys, um, but we identify with Philly on times like this. So you know, it's not like we're pretending like we're broadcasting from Please the city. Please don't tell me how I identify. Okay, but go ahead. Fair enough, pal. Don't don't shank me. Again. She her. <laughs> don't shank me. Oh, okay, please, please. All right, all right. If if her is not, if her will allow me to continue. I still don't understand, but go ahead. All right, right. Um, I'm I'm off track now. Um, great videos. So great yeah, videos yeah. coming from the celebration. And after all these years of the country, of the world, loving to talk shit on Philadelphia and this area, yeah. now people love us. Yeah. I've noticed Barstool posted a couple times today, and they're like, there is no place on earth like Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. The, and it's the, showing yeah. that crowd by City Hall. Mm -hmm. It's showing, like, the... The, the general festivities. They constantly call us scumbags, too, and they got us dead on. They're right. Like, we're just a bunch of scumbags. There's nothing like a home Philadelphia game, and it, and it translates to TV. So when they're watching around the country and the world, it's noticeably different in Philadelphia than it is in Seattle or San Fran. Like, and everyone's seeing that. And I think it's got it's a general uptick to, like, in sports and maybe music or anything, people wanting to be here. Yeah. It could probably help in business, too. Like, I know a couple of years ago they were wondering where – Amazon's new plant was going to be, and Philadelphia was like a finalist. I think they might have went to Baltimore. Who knows? But I think it has an overall positive effect on everything. Business, um, 
you know, the nightlife, people's um, happiness. It's just, it's just a cool thing. What I was about to say, I'm here for. Yeah, it. what I'm saying is, so there's a big crowd down by City Hall. Mm-hmm. Did you see Jello Man? Like, there's the video going out this evening with. Je- Do you know about Jello Man? Is he to do with the tattoos all? On his stomach? Jello Man is Sammy Vile and Kurt Vile's brother. Like the Vile family is like. Oh, the musicians. Yes, okay. the musicians. So you got Kurt, Kurt sure. Vile. Mm. Uh, then I don't know them all. Mm. Um, Sammy's a local musician and he does these really, really funny videos that like might prom- promote his next gig and stuff like that. But they're like well produced. Like they're all so artistic. Right. And then their other brother, and I don't know the family well, but their other brother's name is Jello Man. And there may be more. I, I don't know. Is it but, his baptismal but, name? Dude, he might as well be. <laughs> it might be Paul, I think. But he's known as Jello Man. And I think he came to fame at one of the festivals or several of the big festivals like Firefly, whatever. But he would go around the camping sections of these campouts, these yeah. festival campouts, and he would have jello shots. And he became known as Jello Man. Well, now he's got like one of those one wheels where it's like that, not a full on Segway, but that kind of idea, but with like a skateboard, but it's like a, a unit. He's got super athletic. He's got all these weird things. Yeah. Anyway, they're showing the big crowd down by City Hall last night, and it's fucking Jello Man up on some kind of board, and he's surfing this board <laughs> as the people below him are crowd surfing it. Yeah. And he has this bow and arrow type thing that he's flinging Jello shots out to the crowd with, and the crowd is just going off in delight, dude. No shit. And so it says there is, in the, it's Barstool's words, like, there's no place like Philadelphia. <laughs> like, it was just the craziest, most random shit. And then he does a handstand on this board while it's still being crowd surfed. Wow. And the crowd goes ballistic, and it looks like it's about to tip oh, over, and he, and he somehow doesn't fall. He maintains the handstand, while, and it, it gets, for yeah. those watching on this camera, it gets tilted, yeah. where there's no reason he's still on up. Speak, speaking and of... He, can, he <laughs> j- recovers. Yeah. And speaking legend. of falling, did you see the one where they actually were up there on the bus stop yeah. there? And it just... Ksh, I mean, yeah. Somebody broke a bone. Yeah, a group of dudes <laughs> up on a uh, the top of a bus stop, yeah. and it just Now, you, hef- the Hef Dog, you, like... Does that, when you see that, are you like, I got to get down there? Are you at the no. age now where, like, uh, no. you know, glad to be so far no. away from that? Yeah. So thankful that I so can watch, I, yeah. watch shit like that on Instagram. Yeah. And get a sense of what it's like. Right. But without I, having to get down there. I'm not home. on that time anymore. Like, I'm to be down it. there. Yeah. Like, at, an, at, at, a, at a time that was like, oh, I got to get down there for that. Now I just want to watch it from a safe place. I don't even really want to go to the games anymore. Like, like, Dude. like someone asked me this week, like, oh, if I get tickets, I'm like, not really. I'm like, I, uh, it, first of all, football translates perfectly to TV. You, you see everything. You're at a game. You're watching dots on the field. And you're basically watching the big, big fan board to see anything. It's just not. It, it looks awesome, and I and I I understand it. But no, I'm I'm cool not being a part of it. I'm not frowning upon it at all. Yeah, I used to be about it. For those listening. And what's cool is we get, to, <laughs> we get some metrics on who's listening and who's not. How accurate it is, I'm not sure. But we seem to have a shout-out to our, our friends over at Westchester University, WC. It, feel, it, it seems like we've got at least a few of you guys over there watching us from the younger <laughs> generation who I'm sure are down at these things. Yeah. We're not frowning upon them. Boys, I have to tell you. We used to do it all the time. Yeah, but you just it. kind of reach we a point it. where yeah, you we did it. You've like already did it. it, you've experienced it, it rules. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, twenty years later, you don't feel much different, but I'm not quite as up for uh, negotiating traffic on the way down or back anymore. Yeah. Well the, the when you're young. Blacked out you taxi even, you rides get, are cool you don't even for a think while. About that. You think about you're taking the L yeah, and dude, you got your boys. it becomes thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, like that's it that's just like how I always say, everything's relative. Like what what was fun then might be a little bit overwhelming now, but still, yeah, it's not like we didn't do it. We did it, and it was awesome. Yeah. So that's why, like, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped up for Philly. I fucking go Eagles, man. And the next two weeks are going to be awesome. So the Super Bowl's in Arizona. Yeah. I saw in the news there's already people, like, figuring out all their shit, and there's something else going on out there. The Waste this- Management Open. Okay. The loudest, no, golf, the the shit contest. Golf oh, sport. is that where they throw the beers yeah. on the 18th? Yeah. That, that, that is fucking awesome. If they score, if you get a hole in one, yeah, they literally it's like a hat trick, but they'll throw. You know, that's the coolest golf. Oh, I did see that before in the country. Yeah, that's awesome. And all yeah. the dudes are drinking. They're kind of even. Drink, aren't the golfers drinking? Uh, the beers are not uh, really I mean, it's professional. They're, not, they're technically not allowed to drink, but you know, right. come on, man. Yeah, exactly. Um, everyone does. Everyone said, does that, drugs. That hole, that stadium section right there. uh Minimum price for one day is five fifty, but it's all you can drink. Ooh. Yeah. So Arizona's going to be bumping this week or yeah. in the next two weeks, but 
Yeah, that's uh, I'm excited for it. Um, I saw, I saw there was supposed to be some green comet coming by. HT, you are a local astronomer. Do you care to, to chime in on this? When can I see it? Did I miss it? Is that like an Eagles you fan that runs down the street? It. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not the blue comet that's oh, at gotcha. restaurant. My, that, my, my aunt, oh, oh, my, at least my aunt, aunt, my aunt yeah. worked there. My aunt was a waitress hey, man, at the I blue comet. Place, can I get man. you boys some it. more scrapple? Yeah. And she did smoke. I, I do remember as a kid, she I'm was a waitress psychic, at dude. the blue comet, and she, she smoked while working, and everybody smoked while working. I remember like bringing the food, and she had the cigarette dangling from her lips. I know the last time I was at the uh, Olympic Diner in Clifton, right and I think that I think that shit's trashy in a funny way. But it was so bad that the fucking waitress's smoke bouncing out of the middle of her mouth while she's taking her order. I, I, I was charming. like, I'm never That's coming charming. back. That's charming. I, I was uncharmed by it. Yeah, I love, I'm the type of guy that you know, I get imperial three times a week still. I love that old world stuff. How do you maintain that sex V? <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. abdominal sex V no with idea. all this pizza intake? I actually have a, it's really like something the opposite else. V. Like this way, so I go there and it goes out that way. <laughs> I have a triangle. Oh, that's right. I stand on my head a lot around you. <laughs> Tom, what were, so, HD, so there's a, a, a not, not the blue comet, but a celestial event. Yeah, so there's a comet that's in the northwestern sky. It's going to be its brightest. Uh, as of this taping, it'll have already passed. But uh, basically, February 1st. Are you saying I missed it? No, no, February 1st. Right. Right now, uh, it's uh, uh, January 30th. But February 1st in the northwestern sky, you'll be able to see the comet and its tail. And it's going to be faint, but... Will we be able to see its asshole? Yeah, well. and like uh, hopefully, I I want to know if there's any groups like cults that are going to commit suicide and follow that comment. Well, we anywhere. didn't. We didn't. Yeah, learn let's about get to that shit. Yeah, maybe didn't we can start that until about 16 months ago. So they the cults didn't get time to prepare for this. Oh, okay. you just give me and, a chance. Uh, and then it's not going to come back for 50,000 years because they figured out its orbit. Right now, if uh, you really want to see it. You, no, nah, I'm, good. I'm good. I'm good. Actually, not the best place to look because all the light pollution. Yeah. But if you have a uh, can't app see it's called Stargazer. It's yeah. a free app. Yeah, you my, point it into like, the sky and it'll show you where the comets are and it'll tell you where to look. And but uh, here Potter County would be a good spot. Potter County. Oh my PA, God! Like, yeah. the, the, sky, the sky is very. I hear that they can age a comet by lifting up its tail and looking at its asshole. Tom, <laughs> do we know how old this comet is? Um, I haven't looked at its asshole, so I'm not uh, sure. Just do we know the age? Part of me for probably, being crass. Probably 14 billion years Whoa. old. Yeah. You know. You know what? I I just I don't know. I mean, I don't really I don't get off on that, but it, it's absolutely enormously interesting and all that. But it's just like you know, nothing. It doesn't change anything. That's, really, that's you know? fucking sick. And when it does change, like it will be long gone. It's wild, you know? dude. It's just wild. Yeah, it's to wild. Think about, man. Yeah, we're in it. We're you know. I love the fact that we're just spinning on a planet and all that. Like that's been that, that's a cool thing to think about, but. I don't know, but it stops there. It stops there for me. All right, you know, you know, that's all that's, right. that's all. Yeah, you heard it here, kids. If you want to be like Money Mike, just don't be curious about. Don't the, be curious yeah, about the you know, origins about, of life. Exactly, or no origins of life. Totally cool, but things in the you know the comets and stuff they've happened before. You know, I Are like they the exclusive. The not, I think they're. Yeah, I, th I think they're oh, exclusive. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's not the meaning of life. I love like the meaning mm. of life and the origins of life. Obviously. Life started when Jesus said it did. <laughs> you yeah. know and I know. Yeah, it. whenever Sister Rosita told <laughs> yeah. us it did. That's no, when it started. With the fucking Adam and Eve. Like, obviously, that's the truth. Indeed. But, yeah, that... Um, yeah, Raptor Jesus. Remember that one? No, when I they don't. Said the I don't. Stood? Oh, no, so it was a meme. It's like the, the Baptist church that believes that the earth is only 6,000 years old. And then so oh, yeah, the raptors there. were around, yeah, and Jesus does. rode on top of a raptor because he sounds was in good that to time. me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm it was for that. yeah, I do. I I belong to this church, and yeah. it, you nailed it. That's exactly yeah. what we believe. I but can't dude, believe if I you guys remember. Want to do a deep dive? Just look up James uh. Webb Telescope and I'm Origins out. of Life. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, already oh, out. Oh yeah. shit, I'm out. Hey, it's all yeah. right. No, it's uh, maybe I'm just not interested. Just misspell it, life like L Y F E, and it brings up weird porn. Yeah, yeah, and in. So yeah, you got any gigs this week, Half Dog? Yeah, dude, I'm back at uh, I'm back at Barnaby's Westchester. Right. It's been a month or so. If so you watch any of our episodes, like we're pretty much at the same places. <laughs> yeah, every time. Yeah, we're so, not on yeah. tour, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm at Barnaby's Westchester on Saturday. Are Saturday. you anywhere? Uh yes, Saturday. Con Murphy's in Philly, actually. Nice little um, downtown. That was probably you couldn't probably get in there yesterday. It's parking like down there these days. Do they have a little spot for right you in the garage? Door, yeah, garage, and it's. Not much, fifteen bucks or something. Oh, like you have that. to pay for it. Yeah, you have to pay for it, but it's uh, half, or whatever. Okay, yeah. all right, we'll take it. Yeah, I add that into my price, but I like it. 
Can I can I ask when you're going to be uh, doing brunch again? Because the uh, wife loved that day. I don't know because I actually something happened. I had a gig there and I called out, and I don't know how happy they are with me. So I got to work my way back into uh, uh, to the Concha Hawkins scene. Uh, yeah, okay. exactly. I mean, hey, I mean, they get two people. Uh, I guarantee you uh, the time you're there though. So I yeah. mean, it doesn't really bode well for you on that. But hey, we're. She she loved going up there for that, and she had a Thank great you. time. So. Well, if she needs my phone number, give it to her. AC, hey, is your golf shirt been on, uh, on Inside Out all day, or just like? <laughs> I didn't even uh, notice that. Yes, it has been uh, Inside Out since I started cooking uh, this evening. And these are my old work shirts. So mm-hmm. just in case I had to get on camera tonight, I didn't want to have my You would typically work. be shirtless. Oh, of course. You know, <laughs> what, a, of course. what a god this guy is. But I didn't want to get grease on me tonight. HT you know is also a world-famous cook. And that's. <laughs> An internationally famous lover, too. Yeah. This guy. Yeah, speaking of lovers, have you seen the Paul Pelosi video? No, what's that? He's like Nancy, Nancy Pelosi's uh, husband. No, and they, dude, yeah, I don't know. released. All right, what, what's... what's? Uh, well, of course, like, Tucker Carlson and all them said, like, you know, he must be, like, gay with this guy. But Wasn't the, there something months ago? Yeah, the video came out. Yeah, he, uh, it was yeah, an intruder. Really an intruder okay. broke into the house and basically fucked him up with a hammer. But then everybody, like, on the news cycle said, like, he's no, he's they were gay lovers, <laughs> and they got caught, like... And then the video came out, they, like, recently that just proved, like, no, like, he, the guy broke into his house and was beating him with a hammer. So now they're saying to all the people that, like, told, you know, you know all those lies, like, oh, are you going to apologize now? And, and nobody has to apologize for shit anymore. Just Dude, how is that possible? Down. You can just be like, ah, nah, not. they were gay. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then when you get proved for wrong, months. Yeah, then when you get proved wrong, you're just like, nah. The only no. thing they proved was he was inebriated, but and he was in his boxer shorts. But think about this: if you're inebriated and you go to bed, do you wear your full suit? Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, and they he saw had the underwear guy. on while he was sleeping. Yeah, and you see the guy breaking into the back door. Must with have been butt fucking a vagrant. Exactly. So like, I just love how like now in the news cycle, like, you don't have to apologize for shit. That's you know, it's it's, it's amazing. I wish like there's no there's no risk. There's no and then the people yeah. that are so adamant like yeah, he was butt fucking nuts. like <laughs> they just conveniently miss the one episode. Like they'll mention oh, it. I didn't they'll see mention it. it once. That's not what I saw. They will retract it once. That's not what I after saw. After they said it a hundred times for weeks, and the people that love it miss that one blurb that they throw out there real yeah. quick. They miss it. Like oh, I didn't see that shit. Yeah, it really happened. Yeah, man, two truths. Dude, Elon but whatever. It all comes down to who can fight better. This. Yeah. On Twitter, he, Elon apologized. He goes, "I was wrong." And Did he? Because uh, that was the big thing. What, whether cool he thing. was going to, he because apologized. you know, he goes, "I was uh, misled." You know, he goes, "But the story that came out, right?" Well, out, if you're Elon Musk, you should really be. You should be held to a higher standard to it. You, you shouldn't jump on it. Just oh, the story came out thing. You're Elon Musk. Like you, you know, you have a big platform. I don't know. I, I'm of the belief that people with a well, bigger platform have more responsibility. Platform. It was before he owned that platform when he came yeah, in. Well, so. he still owns half of the. I don't follow it. Yeah, that's that was Paul Pelosi. So funny. So like, <laughs> all that like gay stuff was just proven wrong. Proven wrong. Yeah. I mean, how about this? Didn't the Pope come out last week and was like, "It's okay to be gay," yeah. not verbatim, well, yes. but he gave a speech where he was like, "It's not a sin to be homosexual." No, well, he he, he can't make that call. That's got to go through some catechism, like Rome, right? But, just, but he made the call saying, like, from this point on, I'm making the call now to like to change. Our, our our set belief on this, but you know, you can be gay. And but the be Pope Christian. is infallible, okay. right? Is that still a thing? Where like if he says it, it's considered the word of Jesus. So all the people that have been hiding behind, I don't just hate gays because you know I'm you know, I'm I'm not heartless. I hate him because it's my religion. Well, now that some Chilean guy that right. lives in Italy right. said that it's okay, shouldn't they it's now change? I don't. It's got to go through. Like, like yeah. look, my attack on Catholicism yeah. remains yeah. strong. Yeah, Two weeks yeah, but in. No, still, like he said, yeah, correct. The he Pope says it, but he can, he's suggesting it, is, you know. But it has to become ecumenical. Law, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's not. And really there's also like the I, I don't know if you saw with the Flyers, like the player didn't want to. It was yeah. Pride Night, and he didn't, you know, didn't want to do the pregame with the jersey on. Like you know, whatever. I, I support, you know, gay the, the whole thing. Yeah. But like at the same time, like there's a lip, like we can't fight everybody. I don't look good in rainbow. Or, like, just fucking, if you don't want to do it, don't Russian do it. Orthodox. That's all. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like About thing. the Russian Orthodox, that they don't they don't follow the Pope. So there's Christian, not all Christians follow the Pope. So, you know, they might not, even if the Pope says that they don't have to believe it, you know. So. All right. But uh, that's, I saw that, too. And, you know, they'd have a lot more fucking followers because some of the, the gay, a lot of the gays, they, they, they'll follow the Catholic shit. 
Like the, some of the gays I know are like the hardest core Catholics. Yeah, dude. Yeah, they're missing out on numbers, man. Yeah. This here. Yo, dude. So, do you do you listen to much like new rap? Like new rappers, like the younger guys, like the mumble. Not real. I know who they are. Like I know uh, Chief Keef and all that. I like some right. of the street rappers more, Dude, like um, you know Arab and uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. You're much more in tune. I mean, yeah, with the, with the street non-commercial. Shit. But yeah, not like the Lil Uzi Vert. Okay, so yeah, like yeah, Lil yeah. Uzi Vert, I think of him. Yeah. Of when I typically think of the sh- like the newer shit that like I've just I've tried and mm-hmm. I I don't get. Lil Yachty was always a name that ca- always a name that came to mind. Yeah. Know who he is? There's no problem with him. Just never heard shit that I thought was cool and right. Dude, Questlove, the 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 Roots drummer, he's I trust his musical sense. I read his book. No big deal. I read a little bit. Yeah, um, read his book. Both readers, and I, and I love his uh, I love his takes on music. He yeah. talks like great stuff about Prince, where he's kind of like stuff he's written has made me look at Prince's music in a different way, where maybe I didn't get it at first, at first but now yeah. at least. And he has this long Instagram post the other night, and maybe I'll I'll, I'll text you the picture, but he's like, look. He's like, bear with me here. He's like, I listened to this album and couldn't believe it. I listened to it again, full the way through, three times. Yeah. And not only did I not expect this from Little Yachty, I didn't expect this from music, period. He's like, In this general, is... In the- general, th- these days. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's it's wild. He's like, um, this is the type of album, I forget the terminology he used, but he's like, it's, uh, it's typically what's called like a divorce album. When you feel like you've musically you've painted yourself into a corner, you're tired of the contract you're in. You owe them one more record, yeah. and you just do something stupid just yeah, to blow just it to up and the, move on. Yes, he's like it normally works where like it scares the record company away and you're out. Yeah, because, but sometimes it backfires. And he mentions Sergeant Pepper's, um, Sergeant Pepper's. Yeah, and he's like, little did they know that show tunes would not turn off their crowd, but only gain them the new crowd that likes show tunes. And so I never Sergeant thought of it Pepper's that way. was that for them. That was I, the last one. I, yeah. I've dug deeper, okay. But judging from that, anyway. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm gonna go for a walk the other night. And I, I put on, let me give this a shot. Yeah, dude, it starts out, and it is like, it's pretty rip off. I'm not not down. It, it's fucking awesome. I, li- yeah. I listen to the album front to back a couple times. But it's awesome. Yeah, it starts out like almost like a complete rip off of like Pink Floyd's Animals, and like um have a cigar. Yeah. But it is full on Pink Floyd vibe. Which I love with it's, rap, r- rap over top, but it's not, but it's not like the normal rap that you would expect. He's trying to sing a little bit, yeah, and maybe it's auto tuned, but like it's just it's interesting that he's just trying something so artistic. Yeah, and uh, then when the rap does come in, it might be slower, it might be like a little bit more syncopated, it might not quite fit. Yeah, but the whole time you're like, this is weird and this is out there, but this is very listenable it's, and this is pretty interesting. It's artistic. Wow, it's so super he's, artistic. Yeah, it's it reminded me of like. When Radiohead, like OK Computer, came out. Holy shit! And I'm shit. not saying yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Like, yeah, dude, it's from it, Lil Yachty. It really seems. All like... I know about Lil Yachty is he bangs uh, "Cash Me Outside." How about that girl? No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's dude. I hate she's her. A bad, I hate her a so bad much that too. like she's grown on me. To yeah, where I she's want a it. bad bitch, dude. Yeah, dude. And yeah, that they're like a thing. But man, I I, I didn't expect that at all coming from. They're an ongoing thing. I kind of not ongoing. I pegged her as a bit of a pass around. Yeah, exactly. But the, the, no that... offense, cash me outside, girl. And <laughs> our invite for you to visit us still is it's, on the table. Yeah, bad bunny. Is it, yeah, that, that, I I think it's over. I don't think uh, anybody from in their young twenties latched together anymore. That's out of style. Yeah, it's right? out of style. Yeah. I it's respect like, that. Yeah, I respect it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're boy they're boy. Dude, it's a it's a great listen. I forget what it's yeah. called, but if you mean wh- wherever. You search wherever, it's gonna pop up and you're gonna know. Yeah. Um it's fuck it's fucking cool, man. I have to admit. I'll, I'll take a listen to that. Did you see Dave Matthews? Uh they have a they have a new, new album I, coming out. So the guy yeah. the, the 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 pedophile in the band, did he is he still in there <laughs> or is he out? Dude, not a pedophile. <laughs> not a pedophile. Not a pedophile. Uh, he was just, oh, he's just a st- he was bad to a boy. Not a pedophile, but a, okay. a, a closeted a closeted gay. Mm-hmm. That's not the joke. The joke is he was very aggressive. That's what he it liked was. feet, but he liked socks. <laughs> like he would hit these dudes up and like ask for their socks so he could like beat off to them and stuff. Their socks. Oh, it was just dude. such a weird niche. And like, that's so. Specific that you know it's true. Yeah, no, dude, you can't yeah. back out of that. Yeah. Like, nobody would make that. Like, it was like, oh shit. Well, yeah, you know? he's not on the scene anymore. Yeah. Um, there's no violin player in the band. They have a new full time oh, like, guy huge, on organ, Buddy yeah. Strong. Yeah, that was, was such a cool. huge part. The, the, some of the best times of my life were going to see Dave Matthews 100%. concerts in high school. Yeah. I remember, man, you would just 
you know, drink beers and you were underage and you'd hook up with chicks. Like, I remember one time. And your dollar had value. Your dollar had value. <laughs> like, there was dry hump sessions going on. I remember, like, just walking into the, and looking in between cars and just fucking dry hump sessions. Like, dude, triples. Oh, just people sliding in third base. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, and everywhere, you're just looking. Dude. You're like, wow, this is life. That's yeah. life. Like when I think of that life, was, that was it. When I think of pre nine eleven life, it's all Dave Matthews Band parking lots. Yes. Until that fateful day, yeah, life just, was just Dave Matthews Band anywhere, parking lots, just trying to get a hookup in, and not trying too hard, and to not be trying too hard because you know Dude. you're, you're going to get one anyway. Dude. You know, it's just how many. But those those were those are the highlights of my life. Dave Matthews. See that man? They have a new album coming out, and I was like laughing to myself at how far out they're they're telling everyone about it. So it. We're taping on a Monday night. It's January 30th, I think. Tonight, yes. Is it January 30th? It is, yes. So this album isn't coming out until May. Really? Yeah. The tickets for their upcoming tour go on sale in like three weeks. Yeah. So maybe I guess that's the hype for the... But like, that is a big... That's a big, big jump, lead. yeah. So hopefully it gets more interesting and exciting. Or maybe they, they got hopefully, a couple man. things they're going to... Um, I fell off. I, I used to absolutely love them yeah. in the late 90s when I was 70 years old. Um, yeah. Like the late 90s. And yeah. then, like, they just started releasing bad albums that at least I didn't enjoy. Right. Like, I didn't, who I am didn't, I to tell them their music's not right. good? Right, you know. Something's they, working. They had, a, they had a niche with the kind of acoustic uh, frat kind of rock thing. And like any band, like, I kind of feel for them. Where, where do you go yeah. after after being perfect you and know you can't I mean? be 24 years old forever so of yeah. course your outlook on life right. and, and even your, Spr- your musicality yeah. is going to change and i feel that same way about springsteen like the first three albums four albums were so fucking amazing of course it, like you know like you know he puts out like uh um hungry heart or something like that yeah. and those guys are going to be disappointed but where do you go from right. rosalita like right. all the excitement the highs and lows of like cinematic love and you know the streets and all that and then like finally maybe it didn't pay the bills and, and you put out a, something like that like it's it's tough not to hate on it but uh, you got to kind of think of the big picture you know yeah i mean they're not they're not machines cranking out they're they're yeah. real people that are living their lives even sir mexalot matured a lot throughout <laughs> his career the first hit was about butt yeah. And the second hit, the second hit was about tits. And you're oh, not you said g- that last week, right? Yeah, but you're not going to get pink eye from tits, Mike. So it's le- it's more classy. At least m- most tits you won't get pink eye from. Sir Mixlock gets a lot of plug on it. Hoogie time. I just I was just thinking about an arc of maturity <laughs> musically. <laughs> musically, well, you said yeah, he went with that a band after that. But yeah, dude, Bruce Springsteen, man, like when they started out, like in uh, up in Asbury Park. Yeah, I read in his book, which is the best. Great, greatest book I've ever read. I didn't make it through. It was, oh, I didn't make it through. It was the greatest book I ever read. I read I, it in I didn't three hate days, it, man. but it was I like just six hundred pages. It, it was blew a lot. By. Yeah, yeah, dude. Blew it, by. it was taking me a long time to get through, and I, I like it was like the, the, off your the, Adderall the, that week, man. I, I, I guess I should have. Yeah. But like the court shit in the eighties, I think is when I just was like, all right, dude, I get it. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not I, saying I didn't. I didn't. I'm not saying I dislike it. Yeah. But what I like it was when he talks about how they got their bearings playing gigs like on the be- at the beach and the shore. Right. They went to a bar that was empty. And they were like, you don't have to pay us. We're going to set up over there, and we're going to play. Yeah. And we're going to have our Get guy. the stuff. We're going to have our, our guy collect a dollar at the door. Uh, then we don't need a cut from the, you know, whatever. Or right. we can we can deal with that out. later. Yeah. And the guy's like, all right. And the first couple weeks or nights or whatever, there was nobody coming through. And then maybe three people, then whatever. And then it just cranked yeah. after a few weeks. And then it made more than enough sense. Yeah. For the arrangement they worked out, like, Everybody was making money, them and the bar. When I read that part in the book, I was like fascinated. I was I, I, like, that was one of the <laughs> biggest moments of like, man, I would have loved to have been there because they had that James, white James Brown thing going on. And like, yeah. and it was fun. And it, you're at the shore dancing with your, you know, your lady. And then you go out to the store. Your dollar there. had value. Yeah, your dollar <laughs> had value. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that Springsteen, man, he, I mean, obviously he's a big influence to both of us, probably the biggest. And what a crazy different time, too. Like, it's, 1974, three, you're hanging around Asbury Park. Half the people didn't even leave their house with shoes. You hear, you hear a commotion <laughs> from the bar. You go, you pay a dollar at the door. Yeah. You go in, and you don't know it's Bruce Springsteen, but you see this bearded guy, real skinny, yeah. cranking through three hours of originals that people are fast dancing to, hearing them for the first time. Like, the hunger for original music was so great. Yeah. 
that it wasn't like I'm going to go support my buddy at the coffee shop and right. listen to his music. Original it was died. we're going to yeah. fast dance all night long to this band as long that as we've never heard. As long heard. as your tempo, you keep your tempo. Dude, they fucking love it. As long man. as the fire's there, we're going to rock they and roll. Loved it. He's the last of the breed, man. I mean, people. Well, yeah. <laughs> thank you, ladies thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you, Mike Barkley. But I mean, with the passing of like uh, Crosby, like those guys are going now. So like Bruce, like. I mean, obviously, he's in tremendous shape. He's probably going to live for another 20 years. But, like, yeah. you got to see some of these guys before. You know, I, I always thought that. Like, you know, I saw the Stones, and it was one of the most, like, the Stones and Dylan, and the, both of them were so underwhelming. But I was like, okay, at least I got it in. Like, you know, yeah. and Bruce, but he still puts on the, a, a great show. I saw Brian Wilson and his band do um, Pet Sounds at the Tower. Really? Four years ago, five years ago, maybe. Yeah. And was he was, on a what did it, like a, a like a nurse walk him out to the piano? I'm not. This is not a joke. Like <laughs> I'm not making fun. He was just in poor physical shape and poor fi- poor poor voice. Right. It was cool to be in the same room as him, but it was kind of like a museum display. He had a 15 piece band. Everyone on stage was a genius. Yeah. Um. And they carried most of. The, they carried the weight. Right. It was just kind of almost like. That's why a I novelty. Thought, like, yeah. look, we actually have him on stage. Look, he's on stage. Yeah, but he wasn't. He wasn't the meat of the show at all. That's why Thug Folk. We broke up at the end because they were saying the same thing about me. Like, yeah. I was so, like, ba- in bad shape. Yeah, poor form. When the easels started coming out on stage and you were just painting instead <laughs> of singing, that's when everybody was like, "All right, dude, I get it. I'm out." Yeah, out. We're not going to bootleggers anymore. <laughs> but even then, there was a, uh, in when we were uh, there was still original places to kind of play and do you like your hour yeah that was the that had to have been the last of course there will always be them but like let's be honest a lot of the original rooms aren't that happening no. and they don't have building crowds and it's mostly like come support your friend and not come back all here tomorrow based. night it's all friend it's all friend based. based yeah um the original room in the back of bootleggers yeah. was truly a unique concept and the last one of its kind of course you had the cover band up front with the big crowd that's not everyone's taste but they'd spill out like that but was the, the only people would to get spill some out. Yeah, yeah, that was why that and it was m- designed that to spill out. Yeah, and maybe you know you and your girlfriends come around and they're not playing the songs that you know, so you go back. But at least you were exposed to it for a minute yeah. or two, and some people would stay, maybe because there was more space, easier to get a beer. Sure, but then they'd end up hearing some songs that they might like, and it was yes, perfect. That was perfect, and and I'm glad you brought up that uh, because there was other places like Abilene's Whiskey Tango that tried to do those kind of nights and stuff like that. Um, Finnegan's Wake tried to do it, but it, there was no other draw. It was just the original. So, like, it was nice that Bootleggers had, like, a, t- a band, a, yeah. you know, covered that, that, you know, got your... It was like a side stage. Your bulk people out there, and then you kind of walk in there, and you're like, oh, like, they, they, it introduced people to original music, and it helped them, you know? It didn't set them up to fail. And the original band could s- could still bring their friends out if they yeah. wanted to, but then there'd also be some overflow. Yeah. So it was, like, it was designed like that. We'll have to put a link to our Thug Folk show from Bootleggers Back Room. Yo, that that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's yeah. pr- it's pretty cool. Like it's one of the best played shows that we did, mm-hmm. and we have we have a lot of live recordings still. And, and when you go back, we're not as we're not as yeah, elite as uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not as elite as the legend might lead you to believe. To be <laughs> honest, um, but this is a show where like there's minimal mistakes. It yeah. sounds pretty good. It's really representative of yeah where what we became as far as like an original act, and that video was lost for a long time. It was. It was on like a micro cassette yeah. for this weird um, video camera that I had. I forgot. It was tucked in like a closet somewhere. So when did cool you get that, it, that to video? Probably f- 10, 15 years after? Yeah. Huh. I, that, that, you're right. That is probably the, the, the cleanest show that we could. I mean, the vocals aren't perfect and all in the, you know, but. It's still pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah we're proud of it. <laughs> we don't have tons of archives out there. But we have some, some audio shows that. Won't be released. We'll probably will, but yeah. we haven't been in if a rush just, to release them. Yeah, if you just ask us, we will. But <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, those uh, original rooms and uh, but it was it, to make a CD like back then it was a CD, but an album it was pretty like that. At least you leave your kind of you know like you did and like we did um, to leave a mark doing something. Is pretty cool. There's something that'll be there when you're gone, yeah. and I don't plan to be here too I, long. So. Yeah, how much yeah. did you guys make total on? Lost money. Ninety-eight dollars, right? Lost money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I the, the CD itself cost two grand to make because I remember we played two gigs for free that we got a thousand bucks a piece. That was in two thousand two or something. And it only cost two thousand because we recorded for one day in a professional studio 
where we got most of we did it live we as a band. The, yeah. Like we took a lot of shortcuts. Like that's how we were able to do it for relatively cheap. Um, we did a lot of the album live as mm-hmm. rhythm sections. Um, and then shit that we needed to fix, we fixed for free at our friend Owen Hoxie's home studio for weeks after. We we fixed vocals, we fixed guitar stuff. Yeah. But we were able to get down like most of all of the drums. A lot of the stringed instruments. Bass. Pat Smith hopped on um, a Hammond organ that was on site mm. that we were able to keep. I think they had a, a legit like grand, grand piano. piano. They had a grand, yeah, because yeah. that's the outro of uh, actor. Yeah. Was uh, then we, um, uh, then we, we were able to. Some of the guitar to and vocal overdubs we did yep. in New Jersey. Yep. And yeah. uh, then we were able to finish that. And then I, I don't know what it cost to send it to um, disc makers, but they did a nice job with that. Yeah. I don't know. I just saw a documentary on Netflix. And it was about like the recording studio guys from the '70s and how much things have changed mm. with like home studios, because they're like, we had a hundred thousand dollars worth of recording equipment, and we were the only ones that knew how to use it. Yeah. So if you and your band wanted to record, you had to come through here. And then it talks about how home recording, and then pretty comparable. And then they're just like the market started getting flooded with shittier recordings after a while mm. because like they didn't have a proper engineer and things like that. So we had, I mean, we had an engineer, and we had all yeah. that shit that day. Yeah. So like, we definitely like it was had all the benefits of a real too. studio. Yeah, I haven't uh, kept up with him, but you know, I hope, I hope you're good out there, Owen. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, John, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> he you're does love you. I ever loved. Talks about you all the time. Yeah. Our buddy John Mendoza too from that era. He's in that. Uh, uh the Atlantis Morissette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jacket like, Little Thrill. That's a great name. Yeah. For, yeah, I for a tribute act. Yeah. Shout out John Mendoza. And then JG, I haven't seen JG in so long. Yeah, if, if JG, if you uh, stumble upon Hoagie Time, we miss you, pal. <laughs> One of these days we'll do another show. I think I still owe you 230 bucks too. Most likely, dude. Most likely, yeah. I told you, I'm like, do you have a Venmo? And then I never saw you again. You're like, give it to me the next show. I haven't seen him in 10 years. How long has it been? <laughs> 230, coming your way, pal. Just knock up one of these days. 